Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. You can also join the Telegram group. The link is in the description below. The free PDFs of these sessions will be provided to you all in this very group only. Moving to question number one now. SEBI has proposed the framework for gold exchange that is expected to create a vibrant gold ecosystem in India that commensurate with India's large share of global gold consumption. Which of the following incorrectly relates to the salient features of gold exchange framework? So last when SEBI came up with a consultation paper on gold exchange inviting the public comments, we discussed about it. And now finally SEBI has proposed the pay framework for the gold exchange. So let's discuss this framework first and then we'll come back to the question. So the gold exchange is expected to create a vibrant gold ecosystem in India. See, we have a lot of consumption of gold. So in order to match that very thing, to meet the requirements of the investors who want to go, who want to prefer gold as an electronic instrument, this is going to be really, very helpful. So gold exchange framework has been released recently by SEBI. SEBI had, had its board meeting where numerous decisions were taken. So we'll discuss some of those in today's session. So the gold exchange will be a national platform where you can buy and sell the electronic gold receipts. So um, if, uh, you have to provide the gold and you will get that converted into the electronic gold receipts. So the instruments which will be issued, whose trading will be done on an exchange will be called the gold, electronic gold receipts. You will be able to electronic form mein receipts issue ki jayenge, jinki fir trading will be And uh, the gold exchange will be the national platform to buy and sell the gold, electronic gold receipts with underlying standardized gold in India and also create national pricing structure for gold. So it's going to be a uh, um, medium which will make sure that we have some national price for gold. So one nation, one gold price will prevail when this will come into implementation. The gold exchange is expected to offer a host of benefits like efficient and transparent price discovery, investment liquidity, assurance in the quality of gold. So gold ki jo trading hogi to usse aapke gold ka price determine ho paega, national pricing ho paegi gold ki, liquidity bhi of aegi se and there will be assurance in the gold quality. Aap jo ho, ho sebi recognized jagao pe gold doge uske badle ye receipts issue hongi. Okay, and then if you want back gold, then uh, by providing those receipts, we'll, you'll get back gold. So the quality of gold will be assured properly. It will be checked and because it has a government backing, a regulatory body backing, obviously the quality of gold will also be assured. So all these kinds of safety measures have also been taken into consideration. Moving ahead to the salient features of this framework, is ke kya features rehenge? सबसे पहले जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट इशू किया जाएगा जो जो गोल्ड रिप्रेजेंट करेगा वो होंगी आपकी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गोल्ड रिसीट्स सो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गोल्ड रिसीट्स इशू की जाएगी और इन्हें बाकी सिक्योरिटीज की तरह ही सिक्योरिटी uh, stock exchange mein trade kiya jayega. So the instrument which will represent the gold will be called the electronic gold receipts and they will be like other securities which are traded on an exchange. The electronic gold receipts will have trading clearing settlement like that of other security. So, just like other securities ki trading, clear, clearing and settlement procedure hota hai, wo hi electronic gold receipts ke bhi follow hoga. Any recognized stock exchange as well as uh, which might be existing or any new exchange can launch the trading in EGRs in a separate segment. So, existing jo exchanges hai, wo unhi exchanges mein is EGR ko trade karne ke liye alag se segment bana ki inki trading shuru kar sakte hai. The denomination for the trading of EGR and conversion of EGR into gold will be decided by stock exchange and approved by SEBI. So, at what so what will be the denominations of these EGRs which will be issued? Kitne amount ki se kitne uh, gold ki aapki securities banengi? Ek security kitne gold ke barabar hogi? So, those denominations will be decided by stock exchange. And that stock exchange need to get that thing approved from SEBI. Okay. How much will one EGR represent? How much gold will it represent? What will be the conversion rate? So, stock exchange needs approval for from the SEBI for the same. 
The clearing corporation will settle the trades executed on stock exchange by transferring EGRs and funds to the buyer and seller. So, जो भी securities खरीद रहा है उसको securities EGRs issue करना and जो भी sell कर रहा है उन्हें fund provide करना ये clearing corporation का काम होगा The EGR holder can continue to hold EGRs as long as intended since they have perpetual validity. तो जब तक चाहो आप EGRs को hold करके रख सकते हो और जब आपको gold की जरूरत है तो आप ये EGRs return करके you can get gold in return. So the EGR holder at his discretion can also withdraw the gold from vaults upon the surrender of EGRs. आपको EGR दोगे तो आपको gold मिल जाएगा. ये जो gold है ये जहाँ रखा जाता है उसको कहते हैं हम vaults. so we also have some set of features uh, which have been added to the sebi vault Man managers regulation so sebi ne recognize kuch regulations batayi hain jo vault managers se related hai yani ki wo log wo uh, vault managers are those who basically maintain this gold jo ye gold ko securely rakhenge unko conversion karenge egrs mein और आपको गोल्ड वापस चाहिए तो देंगे वो वॉल्ट मैनेजर्स का काम है सो व्हाट आर द फीचर्स ऑफ द रेगुलेशन एसोसिएटेड विद वॉल्ट मैनेजर्स वॉल्ट मैनेजर्स शुड बी अ बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन इंडिया सो जो एंटिटी है वॉल्ट मैनेजर की वो इंडिया में इनकॉर्पोरेट होनी चाहिए उसकी नेटवर्थ एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी करोड़ होनी चाहिए ओके इट्स नेटवर्थ शुड बी एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी करोड़ एंड वॉल्ट मैनेजर विल बी रजिस्टर्ड एंड रेगुलेटेड एज सेबी इंटीमीडरी for providing vaulting services meant for gold deposit to create egr so aapko agar egr create karana hai to aapko gold deposit karna padega now that gold will be deposited with the vault manager vault manager accepts the deposits of gold stores it keeps it safely creates electronic gold receipts out of it aap gold doge aapko egr create karke denge wo then if you want to withdraw gold you will provide them the egrs and they will provide you the gold in return any grievance redressal will be handled by the vault manager it they will do the periodic reconciliation of physical gold with the records of depository so ye sab uh, jo hai ye key features hai vault managers ke this was about the gold exchange thing moving back to the question we had to identify the incorrect statement so the first statement itself is incorrect it says that the instrument representing gold will be called digital gold security no egrs electronic gold receipts so this is incorrect answer is option a moving on to next question now which says the sebi board approved the creation of social stock exchange for fund raising by, by social enterprises identify the correct features of this exchange so let's discuss this first then we'll come back to the question सेबी ने सोशल एक्सचेंज का फ्रेमवर्क अप्रूव कर दिया है जो भी सोशल इंटरप्राइजेस हैं जो सोशल वर्क करती हैं उनको पैसे की जरूरत है फंडिंग की जरूरत है तो उनके लिए एक सेपरेट सेगमेंट बना दी गई है वेयर सेपरेटली दे कैन रेज द फंडिंग यूजिंग दी स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस सो यूजली द कंपनीज बाय इशूइंग दी इक्विटी ट्राई एंड रेज फंड फॉर देम सो इफ देयर आर सम एंटिटीज इन्वॉल्व इन दी सोशल वर्क okay some specific entity specified over here then they can raise this funding from the separate so social stock exchange so let's discuss a bit about this what are the key features of this framework so sep uh, social stock exchange will be a separate segment of existing stock exchanges alag se koi naya stock exchange nahi banega existing stock exchanges mein hi ek separate segment bana di jayegi where only the uh, securities or uh, of these so these social enterprises will be there and using that they can raise the funding so a separate segment banegi in social enterprises ke liye jahan ye apne bonds equity wagera issue karke paisa raise kar payenge so existing exchanges ki separate segment banegi social enterprises which are eligible to participate in the social स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो ऐसी कौन सी इंटरप्राइजेज हैं जो इस स्टॉक एक्सचेंज के थ्रू पैसा रेस कर पाएंगी दी नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओके देन फॉर प्रॉफिट सोशल इंटरप्राइजेस सो जो सोशल इंटरप्राइजेज हैं और दो जो प्रॉफिट के लिए काम कर रही हैं बट उनका मेन जो प्राइमरी वर्क है वो सोशल इंटेंट से वो कर रहे हैं सोसाइटी को कोई बेनिफिट करने के लिए सो दो फॉर प्रॉफिट सोशल इंटरप्राइजेज विल ऑल्सो बी एलिजिबल टू पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो जो भी नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है और फॉर प्रॉफिट वाली जो सोशल इंटरप्राइजेज हैं जिनका प्राइमरी गोल सोशल इंटेंट है जिनका प्राइमरी गोल जो है वो सोशल वर्क है 
वो इसके थ्रू फंडिंग रेस कर सकते हैं सो सोशल एंटरप्राइजेज विल हैव टू इंगेज इन सोशल एक्टिविटीज लिस्टेड इन 15 ब्रॉड एलिजिबल एक्टिविटीज अप्रूव बाय बोर्ड बोर्ड ने 15 एक्टिविटीज लिस्ट की हैं जो सोशल एंटरप्राइजेज काम कर रही हैं वो सोशल वर्क कर रही हैं उसमें कंसीडर की जाएंगी ये 15 एरियाज में अगर आप वर्क कर रहे हो तो उसको सोशल वर्क माना जाएगा एंड दोस नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड फॉर प्रॉफिट सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस कैन देन पार्टिसिपेट इन दी सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज एलिजिबल एनपीओज में रेस फंड्स थ्रू वेरियस इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अब आपको ये नहीं है कि सिर्फ आप इक्विटी के थ्रू ही इस एक्सचेंज से पैसा रेस कर सकते हो नो यू कैन आल्सो गो फॉर म्यूचुअल फंड्स बॉन्ड्स एटसेट्रा so you can go for zero coupon zero principal bonds mutual funds social impact funds development impact bonds and the npos desirous of raising funds shall be required to be registered with the social stock exchange so sebi needs to make some amendments to its regulatory framework because now it will cater to these social enterprises so norms related to their governance related to social impact needs to be brought in in the existing regulatory framework then it's also important to do the audit of these social enterprises so audit of social impact that is the social audit shall be mandated for the social enterprises raising funds through this very social stock exchange so ye kuch features the is new exchange segment ke jo sebi ne approve kiya hai now coming back to our question we had to identify the correct statements so sse shall be separate segment of existing stock exchange to help social enterprises raise funding this is correct Enterprises eligible to participate include all profit-making organizations undertaking CR, CSR activities. No, for-profit social enterprises and the non-profit organizations which are basically doing those 15 things which have been categorized by the board. So this is incorrect. Eligible entities may raise funds through equity only. No, we just discussed there. You can go for bonds, mutual funds. So only first is correct. Answer is option A. Moving to third question then. SEBI in its recent board meeting considered and approved the amendments to the SEBI regulations, SEBI LODR regulations 2015 in relation to regulatory provisions on the related party transactions. As per the amendments, enhanced disclosure of information related to related party transactions is to be made to whom? So SEBI board has considered and approved amendments to the LODR regulations which relate to the related party transactions. So jo transactions aap un parties ke saath kar rahe ho, jo aapki firm se related hai, to unme aapko kuch rules, regulations follow karne hai, un transactions ke liye approval chahiye, taaki better governance ho sake or transparency accountability aaye. Related party transactions are thus basically those transactions which you are doing with those people or entities who are somehow related to the firm. So to ensure better governance, transparency, those kinds of transactions need approval. So that's why we have some provisions related to related party transactions and now they have been amended. So as per the amendment, what is the new definition of related party? Related party will include all persons, entities forming part of promoter group irrespective of their shareholding. So, whatever promoters are, उनके साथ जो transactions होंगी वो related party transactions consider की जाएंगी. So, whatever promoters are, okay, whoever is the promoter of the firm, irrespective of what shareholding they have, they will be considered as a related party. So, आप उनके साथ जो transaction करोगे वो related party transaction है. Other than that, if there is any person or entity who holds equity shares as mentioned below, they will also be considered as a related party. So, कोई ऐसा person या entity है जिसने 20% और more equity shares ले रखे हैं entity के या फिर 1st April 2023 से 10% या उससे ज़्यादा stake लिया होगा तो वो भी आपकी related parties होंगी. So, if you are doing any transactions with such people or entity who are in your entity having a stake of 20% or more and from 1st April 2023 10% or more then they will be considered as related parties. So they, then there are some provisions associated with related parties. The definition of related party transaction include the transactions between the listed entity and a related party of the listed entity. So if listed entity apni related party ki koi transaction kar rahi hai, usko related party transaction karenge. Ya us listed entity ki koi subsidiary jo hai, wo related party ke saath koi transaction kar rahi hai, to usko bhi hum isi related party transaction mein include karenge. All right. So listed entity या उसकी कोई subsidiary जब related party के साथ कोई transaction कर रही है वो related party उसी listed entity की हो सकती है या उस listed entity की subsidiary की तो वो sub transactions आपके related party transactions में आएंगे 
then the listed entity or any of its subsidiary on one hand and other person or entity on other hand the purpose of which is to benefit the related party of the listed entity or subsidiary ab aap ho sakta hai ki ye listed sub entity ya uski subsidiary related party ke sath transaction nahi kar rahi kisi aur entity ke sath transaction kar rahi hai lekin wo usi company ya subsidiary ki related party ko koi benefit dega to wo transaction bhi related party transactions hai all right now talking about it further prior approval is needed from shareholders फॉर मटीरियल रिलेटेड पार्टी ट्रांजेक्शन सो शेयर होल्डर का अप्रूवल चाहिए अगर आप कोई मटीरियल रिलेटेड पार्टी ट्रांजेक्शन कर रहे हो वॉट आर मटीरियल रिलेटेड पार्टी ट्रांजेक्शन दोज विच हैव अ थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ इधर थाउजेंड करोर्स और टेन परसेंट ऑफ द कंसॉलिडेटेड एनुअल टर्न ओवर ऑफ द लिस्टेड एंटिटी नाउ यू डो नॉट ओनली रिक्वायर द अप्रूवल ऑफ द शेयर होल्डर्स बट दैट ऑफ ऑडिट कमिटी एज वेल सारी रिलेटेड पार्टी ट्रांजेक्शन करने के लिए आपको ऑडिट कमिटी का अप्रूवल चाहिए and then if there are some related party transactions where subsidiary is a party but listed entity is not then also you need the audit committee's approval all right other than that enhanced disclosure of information related to the related party transactions is also required aapko shareholders ka approval chahiye kuch cases mein audit committee ka chahiye iske alawa jo bhi aap related party transactions kar rahe ho us usse related disclosure aapko karna hai kisko karna hai you need to report about that to the audit committee okay you need to provide such information to the shareholders for material related party transactions as discussed in the above two points and such information needs to be shared with stock exchanges in every 6 months as well so in sub in entities ko aapko ya in sub bodies ko shareholders ko in sub logo ko aapko ye enhanced disclosure karna hai related party transactions ka now coming back to our question we had to identify to whom this disclo- these disclosures have to be made so we just discussed to the audit committee to shareholders for material re- re- related party transactions and to the stock exchange as well so answer is option e moving on to last question now there have been significant developments in the mutual fund industry and accordingly sebi came out with revised risk management framework for mutual funds to make sure that they render high standards of service exercise due diligence ensure proper care in operations and protect the interest of investors so this risk management framework will comprise which of the following components so sebi ne pehle bhi risk management framework laya tha in around 2002 they came up with a risk management framework but over time because the mutual fund industry has changed so has changed the need to come up with some reviewed set of directions so revised management risk management framework for mutual funds has been released so let's discuss a bit about that over time there have been developments in mutual fund industry so sebi has come up with this revised risk management framework which will help in better due diligence proper care in operation protect investors rights and ensure high standards of service so why the need arise because over time the mutual fund industry has changed bahut se changes aaye hain mutual fund industry mein new product Well, more innovative products have come up newer classes of investments have emerged technology kitni zyada change ho gayi hai right there have been um, an increase in the risk element aur nayi nayi type ki risks emerge hui hain investors zyada aware ho gaye hain zyada investor penetration hai is in sub reasons ki wajah se hame ab ye revise karna pada framework talking about the revised framework now with the overall objective of management of key risks involved the in the mutual fund operation the revised risk management framework will provide a set of principles standards which will include your policy procedures risk management functions roles responsibilities of board of uh, board of asset management company of trustees so is set of फ्रेमवर्क में क्या क्या बताया गया है कि आपको क्या स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉलो करने हैं रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क क्या कैसा रहेगा बोर्ड ऑफ ए की बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टीज की मैनेजमेंट की क्या रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज है ताकि ओवरऑल रिस्क मैनेज हो सके म्यूचुअल फंड बिजनेस से रिलेटेड वो सब इसमें मैंशन है असिड मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज नीड टू परफॉर्म सेल्फ असेसमेंट ऑफ देयर रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क एंड सबमिट अ रिपोर्ट टू से बी फॉर द सेम सो असेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज को जो ये म्यूचुअल फंड्स मैनेज कर रही हैं उनको एक रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क बनाना होगा दे हैव टू मैंशन हाउ दे विल बी आइडेंटिफाई द रिस्क हाउ दे विल बी मैनेजिंग दैम वट स्टेप्स दे विल बी टेकिंग एंड दे नीड टू सबमिट दैट टू से बी दैट दिस इज ऑल वट वील बी डूइंग एंड दिस इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू इम्प्लीमेंट दिस फ्रेमवर्क एंड दिस एक्सरसाइज शुड बी कम्प्लीटेड 
and necessary systems must be in place with effect from 1st January 2022 onwards. Further, uh, risk management framework need to adhere to certain standards. So, asset management company ko risk management framework banana hai. Okay, they need to establish that. So, it should be properly structured. It should be timely. It should be efficient, timely, dynamic and flexible. So, if there is risk emerge, you can deal with it. You can do your framework, you can do your flexibility. Time bound things should be there that we have to deal with it in such a time. We should have to deal with it in such a Properly structured. And it should comprise of four major components. What should be the four major components of this very framework? This is what has been asked in the question. So the four main components are first, you need to mention about the governance and organization. Ki aap, uh, kaun se risk officers appoint karoge, kaise deal karoge, risks ke saath. Then about the identification of the risks that what you will be doing to identify the risks. What will be the steps you will be taking to measure the risk, to manage the risks and how you will be reporting about the risks and related information. So all these components should be there in your risk management framework, governance. Identification of risk, measurement and management and reporting of risk. Then the asset management company needs to conduct an annual review of the compliance with RMF. So you have risk management framework. Now you have to comply with it. Okay, so comply or not, it should be an annual review of asset management company ko time to time. Karna the results should be uh, presented to the asset management company, board of directors and trustees for their consideration. Moving ahead to governance and organization. So for governance and organization, risk management should be an independent and specific function of AMC. Asset management company ka ek bohat hi important independent function hona chahiye risk management. Uske liye har risks ke saath deal karne ke liye aapko ek aglag se risk officer appoint karna hoga and overall sari risk ke liye ek chief risk officer bhi appoint karna hoga. So for better governance, you need dedicated officers for each and every kind of risk which you are identifying. For investment risk, you need a chief investment officer. For compliance risk, chief compliance officer. For operational risk, you need separate officer. For cyber security risk, you need a, a separate officer. And for overall risk management, you also need a chief risk officer. So alag se aapko aise officers appoint karne just specifically risk management ke saath hi deal karenge. However, the overall risk management along with management will also be the responsibility of board of AMC and the trustees. Then these, the, for this purpose, both the asset management company and trustees need to have a separate risk management committee who will review the uh, RMF at both AMC and scheme level. So, jo bhi asset management company ki level pe uh, risk management framework hai, usko review karna aur jo bhi mutual fund schemes ke saath aap aare ho, us level pe risk review karna dono aapko uh, karna hoga ye risk management committee karengi jo MC or trustees ke liye banana mandatory hai the policy of risk management framework will be approved by board of AMC and the trustees moving ahead uh, SEBI has also specified that what will be the responsibility of board of asset management company of the trustees of the management uh, what they need to do for the identification of risk how they can undertake the measurement and management of risk how they will be reporting the risk so ye sab cheeze humne discuss ki abhi ki aapko components mein risk management framework ke mention karni hai you can manage the risk using stress testing using cyber security using liquidity buffers so all these things should be properly mentioned in your framework and you need to execute it and report to sebi about the same so coming back to our question we had to identify that which of these components are part of rmf we discussed all four are there so answer is option e this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session i hope it was useful thank you so much